Sorry about that, but serving customers is more important than telling stories. Now where were we? Ah, yes, our heroes realizing that a goblin has run off deeper into the dungeon, give pursuit, and as they round a corner, they see a door shutting. As the rest of the group make their way to the door, Kaimin opens the door, and shoots one of the many goblins in the room dead, with his crossbow. Grid catches up and rushes into the room, and kills one of the goblins with a swing from his axe, as Tiasus moves up and shoots a splash of acid over Grid's shoulder, killing a goblin. Holt's dwarven sprint catches him up with the rest of the group, just as two goblins nimbly run out the room and run past both Holt and Kaimin, who don't get a chance to react. Grid kills two goblins with ease, before Tiasus finishes the last two in the room off with a splash of acid. With the room now empty, Kaimin quickly heads off after the two goblins who ran away, and follows them around a corner where he sees a door at the end of the corridor close. Kaimin slowly moves up to the door, to give his companions a chance to catch up, so that he does not risk being ambushed alone. Once the rest of our heroes have caught up with Kaimin, he opens the door, and follows a short corridor to another door. Beyond the second door is a room with two stone pillars, that has a large damaged arch between them. There is a door on the east wall, and a long corridor going off into the darkness to the west. As Kaimin moves back across the room, after looking down the corridor, he passes through the arch and there is a build-up of energy, and he is hit with a blast of force from some latent magic in the damaged arch. Grid comes into the room, and notices that there are bodies lying up against the pillars. He examines the remains of what turned out to be orcs who have long since had their belongings taken by previous adventurers. After examining the bodies, Grid who did not see what happened to Kaimin, passes through the broken arch, and disappears. Holt looks at the arch, not again, where has Grid been teleported to this time? Grid puzzled looks at Holt, what? I am right here. It takes our heroes a few minutes to convince Grid, that he is in fact invisible. Before carrying on any further, our heroes decide to go back to the room, where they chased the first goblin into, for a sit down and something to eat. By the time our heroes are ready to set off, a disappointed grid has become visible. Our heroes go back to the room with the broken arch and make their way through the door. Grid begins digging through a pile of moldy bones in an alcove, while Kaimin looks in another alcove and sees a tiefling skeleton that is missing its legs, hanging from some rusty manacles on the wall. Written above the skeleton in dried blood, in infernal other words, talk to me. Kaimin begins talking out loud in Infernal to the skeleton, but nothing happens other than him receiving a few comments from Grid. Hidden around the corner, in another alcove are two goblins, presumably the ones who ran away, and they are quickly dispatched by Grid once he notices them. Our heroes then make their way to a room with a large headless statue of a nude woman buried in debris. After a few moments digging through the debris, our heroes find the head of the statue which resembles the head of a cobra with its fangs bared. Behind the statue is a small tunnel and with a squeeze, our heroes follow it to a long corridor that leads back to the room with the forest of pillars. On the floor by the tunnel entrance is a dead goblin, its skull caved in, along with some digging equipment. Our heroes head back through the tunnel and make their way through a large set of double doors. Beyond the doors are two corridors, one leading to a T-junction, and a corridor filled with alcoves containing candles. The other corridor, the one our heroes take, leads to an alcove before continuing onto a door. In the alcove is a sunken archway with a portal frame. Etched in the frame is the words, Come hither with bronze visage. Grid asks, What does bronze visage mean? Holt and Kaimin simultaneously respond, Bronze face! Grid smiles and laughs to himself, as he retrieves the fancy bronze mask from his pack, and puts it on for a joke. The world itself shrinks, as our heroes are transported to a gloomy realm, that stretches on in cold, stone pastures, for as far as the eye can see. Upon a freestanding wood wall, hangs a portrait of a wizard, whose eyes shine with madness. And below sits that same man, reading a tome in a high-backed chair. The wizard looks from his tome and smiles. Well, don't just stand there like a boob. Three questions you can ask, twice will the answer be true, and once false. And be quick about it. Our heroes have a short discussion, before deciding on the three questions they are going to ask. 
Holt asks the first question, where on level 1 is a suitable lair for a vampire lord? The wizard responds, there is already a vampire on level 1. Kaimin then asks, where is the goblin bazaar? The wizard responds, level 2. Finally Greed asks, where is Crescendo Rosnar? The wizard responds, in heaven. Once their three questions have been answered, our heroes are transported back to the alcove. Holt strokes his beard, hum, which is the lie. A vampire already being on level one, seems fishy. Kaimin replies, I agree, and it does not really answer the question. Grid asks, does being in heaven, mean Crescendo is dead? Holt nods, yes. I somewhat expected that to be the case. Kaimin interjects, if that answer is the truth. Our heroes continue onto the door at the end of the corridor. Beyond the door, our heroes find themselves at another T-junction, and head north. After a short corridor, our heroes find themselves in a small room, with a pair of bugbears. Tiasus kills the first one, and Grid is relieved that when he kills the second one, an intellect devourer does not burst out of either of their heads. With the bugbears dealt with, our heroes follow a curved corridor, and enter a room where some goblins have tipped a table, to create a makeshift barricade. Tiasus launches a fireball into the room, killing all six goblins and injuring a pair of bugbears at the opposite side of the room, before he dives for cover behind the table. Kaimin shoots one of the bugbears, killing it, but when it collapses to the floor, an intellect devourer bursts out of its head. Grid hoping to kill the intellect devourer before it can do anything, rushes into the room and slices it clean in half. Tiasus leaps up on the side of the table, to get closer to the last bugbear, but misjudges his footing and falls in a heap on the floor. Grid turns to the last bugbear, and takes its head clean off with a swing of his axe, and kills the intellect devourer in its head, with a follow-up strike before it can burst out. The room now clear, an embarrassed Tiasus begins to look around, to see who noticed his fall, and from his new angle notices a secret door. The wizard picks himself up, and dusts himself down, well will you look at that, a secret door. Meanwhile, Grid has moved down a side corridor, and finds a room with a 14-foot-tall granite obelisk standing in it. As he walks towards the obelisk, he can't resist the urge to touch it. As the barbarian touches the granite, he receives a telepathic message, I cast my eye into the future, and see in yours a perilous descent. South of here, beyond the secret passage, waits the two-headed king. Look to his left. There you will see the path you are destined to take. Grid returns, to find everyone looking at a secret door in the north wall. I heard a voice in my head, and it said to go south, and something about a king with two heads. Holt laughs, Grid what's it with you and voices in your head? Our heroes decide to look behind the secret door before they head south, and there are two corridors behind it. Our heroes head straight on, and find another corridor on one side, and a door on the other. Our heroes head down the corridor, and find its walls are lined with old shields, that have emblems from long-forgotten human, dwarven and elven realms. Grid is drawn towards a shield with an emblem of a bear. Holt looks at the shield, ah, that looks similar to a long-since-died dwarven clan's emblem, I saw in a book once. Grid picks the shield up, do you think they will mind if I use it? Holt smiles, I am sure they will be proud. A mighty warrior is taking them into battle, and bringing new honor to the clan. Our heroes continue on, and a large floating eye, surrounded by glowing motes of light appears ahead of them. After spending a moment looking at each of our heroes, the eye disappears without a sound. Tiasus comments, that was a scrying eye, whichever wizard created it, knows we are here now, if they didn't already. At the end of the corridor, our heroes come out of a secret door they were previously unaware of, as it leads into the room where they killed the pair of bugbears. Our heroes make their way back through the shield room, and back to the door they passed. Kaimin listens on the door, and can hear the sounds of a howling wind. Cautiously he opens the door, and on the other side is a zigzagging corridor, a strange rarely used design to thwart arches. As our heroes make their way carefully down the corridor, a wind begins to pick up. Kaimin, Grid and Holt manage to keep their footing, as a strong gale engulfs them. Tiasis on the other hand is not as lucky and flies back over, and lands awkwardly on his back, as an air elemental forms between him, and the rest of the group. As the rest of the party engages the elemental, 
the heavily injured Tiasus gets back to his feet. A short battle is fought, and Tiasus gets his revenge, as he deals the final blow, killing the elemental with a splash of acid. The combat over, Holt takes a look at Tiasus's wounds, and casts some healing magic on the relieved wizard. That was a close call, that Tiasus only just managed to survive. At the end of the zigzagging corridor, our heroes find a door, and the broken equipment of a long-since-dead adventurer, none of it of any value. Beyond the door to the north is a flight of stairs going upwards, and to the south are two doors. Our heroes head up the stairs, and follow a corridor to a door. Holt is awed by the room behind the door, it has been intricately carved with a floor-to-ceiling fresco of a cavern wall, giving the room a cave-like quality, that only a dwarf could truly appreciate. At the far end of the room, is a short corridor, leading to a bathroom with a large sunken basin. Surprisingly, the tap still works, and hot water pours into the basin. Our heroes take a few moments to enjoy the bathing facilities, and give themselves a good clean, to rid themselves of the sewage smell they had almost come accustomed to. Back down the stairs, our heroes look in the rooms beyond the doors. The first room is a dormitory, with eleven stone shelf beds carved into the walls. The second room is identical except lying on one of the beds, is an elf skeleton draped in cobwebs. The elf is wearing hide armor and clutches an oak quarterstaff, both surprisingly untouched by time. Suspecting magic, our heroes use the wand of detect magic on the armor and staff. The staff has some latent magic, likely some sort of preservation spell, the armor however gives off a strong magic reading. They carefully and respectfully retrieve both items, before moving on. With only one more corridor behind the secret door to explore, our heroes make their way to it. At the end of the corridor is a door, and just before that is a door on the northern wall. Kaimin listens on the northern door, and can hear the sound of skittering. After giving a few guesses about what is behind the door, Kaimin carefully opens it, revealing a large room full of giant rats. Grid roars like a bear and charges into the room, and kills a pair of rats with a quick slash of his axe. Kaimin kills a rat with a shot from his crossbow, while Tiasus kills one with a splash of acid. Grid then charges another pair of rats killing them, before he finds himself standing before a larger fatter rat, which to Grid's surprise does not die, when he hits it with his axe. The fat rat stands up on its hind legs, and transforms into a were-rat hybrid form, before taking a bite out of Grid's arm. Meanwhile, Kaimin and Tiasus kill another rat each. The rats now aware of our hero's presence, launch a counter-assault, but as there are only two rats left alive, it is a futile attack. Grid launches a brutal assault on the Wurat, and finally after a barrage of attacks, manages to cleave its head off. During the assault one of the giant rats was unlucky enough to get killed by a reckless swing of the axe by the barbarian. Holt swings his hammer, and squishes the last rat. The combat now over, Grid calms down, and looks at his arm with concern. Holt takes a look at the barbarian's wound, and is confident he has not been infected with lycanthropy. Our heroes make their way to the final door, and the walls of the room behind it have alcoves, with large cobwebbed covered dwarven statues in them. However, as our heroes open the door, they see a giant rat change into the form of a woman. Seeing our heroes are well equipped, the woman raises her hands in surrender, what are you doing here? Holt narrows his eyes as he looks at the woman, we have been tasked with searching this dungeon. Now why are you here? The woman smiles, I am searching for food. I mean you no harm, let me pass, and we can go our separate ways. There is a secret passage behind the far statue. I have not been beyond it myself, so I don't know where it leads, but consider me telling you about it, a favor for letting me pass unharmed. Kaimin considers what the woman says carefully, and is certain she is telling the truth about the secret passage, and nods as he smiles, okay, you may pass unharmed. Cautiously Kaimin makes his way to the statue the woman indicated. As the woman leaves the room, our heroes watch her every move, not trusting her enough to turn their backs on her. Once the woman has disappeared into the darkness, Holt comments, I have a bad feeling, that won't be the last we have seen of her. Kaimin smiles as he rejoins the party, I think we may come to regret letting her go, but at least she was telling the truth about the secret passage, though it only leads to the zigzagging corridor. And that seems like a good point to leave our tale for the day.